I would like you to tell us, first of all, why that bill seemed to be a concern for the NMA. Thank you very much for having me this morning. Uh, it, it's a concern to the Nigerian Medical Association and a concern, and should be a concern to everyone, especially even to our patients, because you see, um, when you start infringing on the fundamental rights of people and start segregating some certain individual or workforce to so try to calm them down for whatever reason becomes very, very um, unpalatable, becomes very untasteful. And that is exactly why the enemy is very, very um, worried about that law. And the law necessarily did not fully address the fundamental issue that is causing the brain brain or the human capital flight that we see every day. It's not really addressing this shortage or severe shortage of manpower. And that's our worry. It cannot just say someone should be, must be in a particular place for a, a duration of period without changing every aspect of his work life. The work life was not the cause, but he must be there because he has a brain, he has studied, and he has that, um, um, I would say, that's uh, well without to be able to administer his profession. So that makes the law very draconian. And that is why the enemy is saying that that law Ghani you Johnson, the member of the APC who was was sponsoring the bill, uh, pointed out something uh, during the debate. He said it was only fair for medical practitioners who enjoyed taxpayer subsidies on their training to give back to the society. So it brings me to ask, the training that uh, 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 medical practitioners receive um, maybe at medical school uh, and the rest of them, uh, are they being subsidized by government? I, I would say that it was economical with the truth in the sense that um, all public institutions, all public institutions have some form of subsidy in training and it's not particular for medical uh, students. So medical studies or medical education as it were, do not have any form of intervention and does not have any form of subsidy as Christ to me. In fact, as you see speak, you can go to, you can Google it, that even medical students still pay more and higher than every other student in any both public or private institution. The records are there. So there is no form of subsidizing medical education in Nigeria. Make it free and then tell people to stay back. Why are doctors leaving? What's the enemy's concern? What, what would you say could be largely responsible? What exactly? Because uh, um, I, I know that a statement from the NMA, I was uh, l- listening to uh, some of the executives speak in an interview, and they were saying that medical tourism should also be stopped if this was going yes. to work. Yes. Yes. Um, why are doctors leaving? Doctors are leaving because the working environment is not conducive. Doctors are leaving because their welfare are not uh, being protected. Doctors are leaving because uh, the, 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 the government is not providing the necessary infrastructure that they want to use to work and discharge their duties effectively. Doctors are leaving because the system is not favorable. Doctors are leaving because there is insecurity. So, because it's not only about issues concerning the welfare. Or, um, or the welfare or the, the health sector. About 15% of the issues of the society also affect the doctor. For instance, if a doctor is posted to a, a rural place and is kidnapped, would the next doctor want to go there? No. So the, the brain drain we see outside the country also affects both rural and urban migration. And they will want to go and say, so what are those modalities in place to ensure that it says a doctor to um, say like a very rural environment, okay, somewhere in the jungle at this way, because it's the jungle. So, so it's something to be able to be it's a participation that is complete. Hello? 